Hello students, welcome to Fatigue Analysis. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're going to do our third example for variable amplitude loading. In this example, we are given a variable amplitude loading block as shown, where we have a completely random uh, uh, loading history, a strain history for this material. And we're asked to determine the number of repetitions to failure of, of, of a given material. To solve this problem, we have a procedure. And that procedure is as follows. First, we're going to apply the rain flow counting algorithm, where rain, flow, rain that flows to infinite time creates a closed hysteresis loop, and rain that encounters another, another roof does not create a closed loop. Once we've created those hysteresis loops or, or defined what is a closed loop and what's not, we're then going to use Ramberg-Osgood to actually form the hysteresis loops and calculate the maximum, minimum, and mean stresses experienced in those loops. And we would use these equations. So we would start from our origin, 0.0 to 1, using this equation, and then we would close the loop using the hysteresis loop equation from point one to two. Once we've created these hysteresis loops, then we'll apply Morrow's mean stress correction factor uh, to calculate the cycles to failure for each of those loops, to consider if each of those loops was uh, its own entity. And then finally, we would apply palmgren miners rule so that we can estimate the number of repetitions to failure for this very, very, uh, this very variable amplitude loaded data. So let's get started with the first step. In our first step, we're going to apply the rain flow counting algorithm. What we'll want to do is we'll want to label the peaks and the valleys throughout this strain history data, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. Right? And we'll want to note what value of strain each of those peaks and valleys is located. We'll measure the strain. Then, in applying rain flow counting, we take that strain history and we rotate it so that time flows downwards. Right? And then what we'll do is we will draw how the rain flows, and if rain flows into infinite time, it's going to create a closed loop. So for example, with A, we flow and the rain flows down and we go into infinite time, that's going to be a closed loop. All right? Um, another example, say rain flows from B to C, it encounters another roof, it will not create a closed loop. Uh, say from D to C, encounters another roof, it will not create a closed loop. How about uh, from D to E? Again, it encounters a roof. It does not create a closed loop. So we're going to work and we're going to try to find all of the instances, all the events where we will create a loop. All right? So let's erase all the ink and let's highlight where we will create loops at. We'll create one from A to B for AB. We'll create one for E to F. We'll create one for I to J. We'll create one from K to L. Um, we'll also create one from G to H. And one, well, it shouldn't be one from C to D. I think we've in, we encounter another, another obstacle here. Um, but let's continue. So now that we've created these hysteresis loops, I mean, uh, now that we've defined where the events are, we then need to create hysteresis loops. I think, I think that last one was, a, is, see, we've got a partial loop here, so that's that last one that we encountered. So we're going to use Ramberg-Osgood's equation to form our hysteresis loops. We're going to take the strains that we know at each of these events, and we're going to use those strains in order to calculate 
what is the stress and stress ranges to, to form these closed loops? These equations themselves, we actually can use, and they will actually, if we plot them fully, they'll create loops for us that we'll be able to make a stress uh, strain plot from. Once we've formed these hysteresis loops, then we need to calculate what is the maximum, the minimum, and the mean stresses that these events are happening over. And why? Because then we can calculate what the stress amplitude is, and with the value of mean stress, we can then start to calculate or, or figure out what is the cycle to failure for each of these types of loops. So with that information, we'll apply means, uh, uh, Morrow's mean stress correction factor, and we'll calculate the cycles to failure that would be required for each of the loops that we have. And then finally, we'll apply palmgren miners rule to estimate the number of repetitions to failure, similar to our uh, uh, first example for valve loading. So uh, that's what we do. We, we, we've got the strain amplitude. Um, we you know, calculate what the mean stress is. We'll say that, hey, there's one cycle. So there's one hysteresis loop in the, in the overall valve block. And then we'll figure out using Moro, what is the cycle to failure, and how much then a damage is accumulated from using Palmer's minor at each of these, in, in each of these hysteresis loops. And then finally, we end up with a value for the total damage accumulated in one repetition. And then we can use minor, the miner's rule here to calculate the total number of blocks to failure, which we'll find to be 822 of these blocks need to be, need to, need to be um, cycled in order to get to failure. So that's the example here for rain flow uh, counting. Uh, it is a graphical approach uh, where we, you know, we think of rain flowing down the side of these uh, 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 strain histories or stress histories, and it is a challenging approach. There do, there, there, um, do exist some codes that help you to automatically process data um, using the rain flow uh, method. I recommend that you go online, do a search, rainflow counting algorithms, and you should be able to find some Fortran codes, some C codes, and even some um, MATLAB codes for processing this type of data. All right, so that's our third example for variable amplitude loading. I'll see you in the next video.